Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Stephanie and I welcome you to my channel, especially if you're new here. This channel is all about God, so expect Him to be glorified. Today I'm talking about what it means to be born again. If you're someone who is a born again believer watching this and you desire more clarity regarding that topic, then welcome. But if you are an unbeliever and you've heard that term being a born again believer or a born again Christian and desire information about what that actually means, then hopefully I can help. The Lord has led me to create this video for you today. And so let's get started. So essentially the term born again means a spiritual rebirth. That is what it's referring to. A spiritual rebirth where the spirit of God, the very spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, comes in and makes a home inside of you. And that is a beautiful thing about God is that he no longer chooses to dwell in a building made with man's hands. He has now chosen to those who accept him and to those who trust in him, he's chosen to dwell within the human heart. The human heart is now the dwelling place in which God chooses to reside. And that is what the Bible means when it talks about the church. It's talking about the body of believers. We are now the modern day temple of God. And so this happens also at the point of salvation. So being born again and the point of salvation are linked you are redeemed and you become saved when the spirit of god comes in and makes a home inside of you and that is also when you become born again so this happens when you turn away from sin you turn away from the things that displease god you desire to turn away from the things that break god's heart and you desire to turn towards god you desire purity and righteousness and holiness and to walk in truth and you confess your sin before God, you acknowledge that you have sinned against your creator and you by faith believe in his testimony. You believe that Jesus Christ did in fact 2000 years ago die upon that cross for you and that on the third day he rose again. So he died, was buried and rose again on the third day. And even though you weren't there to see it physically, you believe by faith that that is what happened and that Jesus Christ is exactly who he says he is, that he's God. And you make him Lord over your life. If you do this with sincerity, because God sees your heart, he knows whether you are sincere or not. If you do this with sincerity, then in turn, God gives you his spirit. The spirit of God comes in and makes a home inside of your heart. And so now you have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness where you were walking according to the course of this world you're walking according to the prince of the power of the air you were blinded by satan you were taking pleasure in sin you were dead in your sin meaning spiritually dead because sin leads to spiritual death now you have been quickened meaning you have been revived you've been made alive in the spirit you've been transferred into the kingdom of god into the kingdom of light the blindfold has been removed off of your eyes you've awakened to the truth about who god is to the reality of your sin and what it's led you to and you are basically reconnected back to your maker now you're able to talk to god to hear from god to be led by God. You've been adopted into the kingdom of God as a child of God. So where you were once alienated from him, separated from him, because that's what sin does, it separates you from God. You are now adopted and God wraps you up in his robe of righteousness and he blots out your iniquities. He removes your sin as far as the east is from the west. He removes it from his memory and he, he holds you close, wraps you up. And now you are considered no longer a sinner, but a son or a daughter, beloved in the Lord. And it is a beautiful start to a journey that is just absolutely remarkable. As you continue to pursue your relationship with God, that is when you begin to grow and grow into the new creature that God wants you to be. And so essentially before 
the point of salvation before you become born again, you have this old identity. You have this identity that perhaps you've created, that culture has created, that social media has created, or different things that you've adopted that you thought were who you are and things that you were convinced of was who you are and is who you are. Essentially now you are starting a process where God will, as you seek him wholeheartedly, will show you the things that he never intended for you to be. will start to shed away at a lot of the things that you've adopted or perhaps that you've been through that have shaped your identity up until that point. He'll begin to remove that and work through all of that and show you who he created you to be and who he always intended for you to be. So at the very heart of it, the point that we become born again, we are crucifying our old self. So all the things that God never intended for us to be, all our worldly desires, all of our selfish ambitions, all of the lusts that we had, and we crucify that to the cross with Christ. And we put away that old man, or we put away that old nature, I should say as well, that old identity. And we put on, as the Bible says, the new man, we put on Jesus Christ. And we begin to walk in the example that he gave. We begin to walk in his ways and in his commandments. And God, as, as we do that, begins to purify our hearts, begins to cleanse us, begins to heal us and basically just shape us into who he always intended for us to be. We are now walking in the image of Christ. We are now walking as a child of God where we are to reflect God. We are to reflect his image and it's no longer we who live, but Christ who lives in us. And so we walk in that new identity. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that he in Christ is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Essentially, you become a new creature in Christ. And that is the evidence of your salvation. The evidence of you being born again is when you say that you're changing you're becoming more righteous and holy the sin is now being put away in your life and you see that transformation not just inwardly but outwardly in your life as well and it's also important to mention that being born again is an essential part of entering into eternal life with God Jesus exclusively states in John chapter 3 verse 3 verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God. You need to be born again. That is a requirement. It's very clearly stated in scripture. And this is contrary to a lot of the doctrine, particularly surrounding Catholicism that teach infant baptism, that salvation comes through being baptized as a baby. But it's being that in itself is being dishonest with scripture. The word of God is very clear that salvation happens when you choose to accept Christ, when you are conscious and aware to be able to know that you've sinned before God and that you, through your own will, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you desire to surrender your life to him. And if you do that sincerely, then in, in turn, God redeems you. That's where salvation happens. So we know that we are to try all things against the scriptures the word of God is our standard and that is by which we live and so we can easily refute the Catholic doctrines regarding salvation especially because they teach that it's through works we cannot earn our way into heaven our salvation is purely a result of putting our faith in Jesus Christ and his grace through the finished work upon the cross it's his righteousness that saves us not our own so I need to make that very, very clear. Yes, doing good things are a reflection of our faith in Christ. And also, if you're an unbeliever, when you do good by others, it's really just a reflection of the morality that God has placed in our hearts. But essentially, what allows us to enter into heaven is redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed upon that cross, spiritually atoning for us and our sin. And so God 
now looks at us as a son or daughter through his righteousness is because we are in Christ. So now we are considered a child, a beloved of the most high God, the creator of all the universe. And that is the most wonderful thing about it all is that when you become born again, the spirit of God is within you. So that means that all the power that belonged to Jesus Christ now also belongs to us through the Holy Spirit, which is the same spirit that was working through Jesus Christ. So that is why believers are able to cast out demons and heal the sick and cleanse the lepers and raise the dead is through the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God that dwells within us. And it is to be a vessel of God is the greatest privilege ever. It is the most amazing thing ever. And now we are essentially awakened to the truth about the spiritual realm. There's so much deception around the world, but the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit, when it comes and dwells within us, will lead us into all truths. God begins to show us the deceptions of the world. He begins to show us our true identity. He begins to show us the paths of righteousness and holiness and purity. He begins to show us more revelation regarding who he actually is. And all of this also happens through reading the word and through receiving personal revelation from God, which can only come through an intimate relationship with your creator. And I encourage you, if you have not yet, repent and believe the gospel. Put your faith in Jesus Christ. Receive him into your heart and become a temple of the living God. Become a temple of the only true and living God, the God who created the entire universe, the one who stretched forth the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth. That is the same God, the same God that knows every star by its name is the same God that wants to dwell inside of your heart. And that can only happen when you, by your free will, choose to accept him and receive him. And that is done through repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. So I love you all. I hope you have such an amazing day. I pray that the things that I've said, not only I pray that God is glorified through it all, but I pray that it landed on good soil and I pray that you really think hard about it and make that decision because it is the most important decision that you will ever make in your entire life is choosing who your eternity belongs to. Eternity with God in heaven or eternity without him in in hell where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth not the place that you want to be so god can't force you into heaven against your will but he lovingly extends his hand and he expresses his love all throughout his creation and if you just make that decision to follow him then it begins a whole new life you are basically have just become a new creature, a newborn babe in the kingdom of God. God begins to feed you his milk and you begin to grow. And then he begins to feed you the meat, um, things that are a little bit more difficult to understand regarding the kingdom. But essentially, it is the most wonderful part about life is salvation in God. I hope you all have a wonderful day. <laughs> Bye.